being in a relationship where no one should feel forced to do something that they don't want to do. Welcome to another episode of Driving with Survivors. Well, kind of, I'm not actually driving. We've just dropped off 1,200 pounds of food for the pigs. As you can see, that pickup bed is nice and empty now. So if you're single, there's a good chance you have to answer a very difficult question. Would you date a non-vegan? In this video, we're gonna explore a few of the key strategies that, we can, um, that may help you to answer this question for yourself. So I think as vegans navigating the species' world, it's, you know, the social side of it to me um, is, is the most challenging. I mean, I think the food thing is, is, is easy in a lot of ways and, and the other aspects of animal use, but really it just, you know, how we interact with friends, family, and especially loved ones, partners. And I think the way we come to this could be any number of different ways. You know, we could be um, vegan at the start of the relationship, or perhaps more challenging is if we're not vegan and during the course of the relationship, we then um, start to become, you know, start living vegan. And I know for me, like a number of friends I had in my life, um, you know, to them, I haven't changed, but from my perspective, you know, there's stuff I don't want to be around. I don't want to sit at a table with body parts anymore and, and trying to communicate that when I'm, I'm the same person from their perspective. And I think in a relationship that could be particularly challenging when these things change. So yeah, I'm rolling with Nisha Nooch, and we, when we first started dating, I was vegetarian and you were not vegan. So yeah, it's some interesting um, dynamics at play there. Um, because I don't know, maybe I can just add, interview you a little bit here. Um, what were your thoughts going into this new relationship with all these unique new challenges that any new relationship has, excitement and maybe a bit of anxiety and all kinds of other emotions. How did you feel dating um, a vegetarian? Yeah, I have to really think back. I think, interestingly, growing up, I don't ever recall knowing anyone that was vegetarian or vegan. Um, and so meeting you was kind of a I guess a new experience in many ways <laughs> but like was like wow okay a vegetarian okay and then when we I remember over dinner one night on one of our first dates you kind of telling me about the book that you read Diet for the New America um, and I think I subsequently got a book and started a copy of it and, and started reading it and everything kind of made sense that you were saying so it was almost like um, I don't know I don't think I'm somebody who's strongly opposed to things generally as a personality so I think I was quite enlightened and I was quite open-minded and, and was able to adapt so that you felt comfortable. I don't know, was that your perspective? Was I adaptable? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely very adaptable and I think, yeah, what I remember is I remember from my perspective I just met this amazing person and I didn't want to mess it up and I, you know, adding on this extra layer of, of, of ethics and answering these big moral questions, it's, it's you know, already a complicated situation with a new relationship. So I remember just thinking to myself like, oh, maybe I'll, I'll bring it up if, um, you know, if she mentions it, but I'm not really sure how to go there and how, how to communicate how I feel to someone that I'm, I've just gotten to know and, and can already tell there's a strong connection with. And yeah, don't, don't want to say the wrong kind of thing to kind of um, send us in the other direction. And I, I think for, for me, the key strategy is also, this will probably be published after our holiday video. And a key theme in that video was just getting to know ourselves. And I think that's something I think we have to do in general, but particularly with intimate relationships is, is asking what we're okay with and what we're not and, and communicating that to the other person. Because, you know, a, a beautiful thing that I just heard um, uh, uh, someone close to us say, um, who actually lent us this truck coincidentally, um, is that, you know, the, the whole idea of being in a relationship where no one should feel forced to do something that they don't want to do. And it sounds like such a simple thing, but I think that's a really key thing that um, I'd like to think our relationship has that dynamic that we're not, you know, you know, we're doing things because we want to do them. And obviously there's some compromise involved, which I think there was on both sides of us, 
you know, me not talking about then vegetarianism, but then also later, you know, exploring veganism because the cool thing I think about our experience was while I might have been, you know, vegetarian when we started or pescatarian more specifically, you were actually the one who inspired us to start watching documentaries. And, and, and it created this virtuous cycle, which, I don't know, let us know in the comments what your experience has been with your uh, relationships and even with your friends and family, too, because I think, <laughs> to, to, to put a crude binary to it, I think there's either people who are open to the discussion or closed to the discussion, and obviously, depending on how that goes, either way, it's going to dictate the dynamic going forward, and I think, fortunately, you were very open to the discussion, so if something happened to us, um, one reason or another, w would you date a non-vegan um, now? Would I date a non-vegan now? Ooh. I think I'd, I'd like to preface that with, I guess, a, uh, understanding kind of more about people's circumstances. Um, in the sense of, if I was, I don't know, I'd, I think I would try and date a vegan first. Yeah, I, I think I would try. If that didn't work and I felt that... I know I wasn't comfortable being single and I'd like to think that I they would be comfortable. Um, I think I'd be okay with that. I've been in quite a lot of like work situations and social situations where I've needed to be around people that are non-vegan and I do find that I've got I guess strategies in place to to be able to manage that. What um, kind of strategies? I guess things like not not kind of focusing in on what the person's eating. I mean, I'm not saying, I guess not looking, not looking at it kind of directly. And then also not allowing my mind to spiral or go down the track of, oh my gosh, not just, you know, like, oh, that's a steak. Whose body is that? Um, what happened to the animal, etc., etc. I I don't, I don't kind of go down that pathway. So I find that's kind of, yeah, a coping strategy. Yeah, and that's, that's interesting you say that because that's exactly the path I usually go down in those situations. And I don't know if it's maybe, um, I think a lot of it may come down to a lot of the footage I've edited. So it's very difficult for me to just block that out. Um, I would find it very difficult to date a, 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 a non-vegan at this stage of my life. Um, because without formally doing it, I've kind of taken the liberation pledge in a lot of ways. Um, to the point where I can't think of a scenario where I feel I would want to be around that, and if I can avoid it, I will. Um, would you, though, question... Question follow time. Up, question follow question up from question. the Chanooch. Follow-up question. Would you date a vegetarian? That is a tricky one. It really tests me because from an ethical perspective, it's no different. But just from a a motive perspective, seeing someone's body for some reason is more visceral than something that came from their body and, and even other forms of animal use. So I, I think I'd be more open to it. I think, I mean, to, to focus on uh, hetero relations, you know, because that's my coming from uh, my perspective, because it's what a four to one uh, ratio of women to men um, who are vegan, I guess I kind of have the privilege, I guess, to say I've... I guess there's there's more supply, but I mean I don't know for you it might be harder to find a, a, a vegan man out there. Mm, and that's I guess part of the rationale of, of thinking I would I'd initially try first, see if I you know had my luck, and then um, and then considering dating non-vegans. Um, and I guess yeah it's hard, but I'd like to think that people who are vegetarian are already been considering these topics and uh, part way along the journey so I think dating a, a vegetarian I think is again making assumptions here a higher chance that those people align with your beliefs understand where you're, where you're coming from and, and successfully have a have a meaningful relationship and maybe that goes for non-intimate relationships um, as well I don't know I think they're all kind of in a social sense, all kind of intertwined, don't they? Definitely. I, th I think that's the key with this. We obviously don't have um, any of the answers, but I think just asking the questions is the first important thing because I know, especially with romantic relationships, I think there's a lot of pressure just to stay in situations that may not work for us. 
Um, and, and also, on the flip side, entering a, a relationship, that would be a horrible situation to be in to think like, oh, I'll give them two or three dates and if they don't start living vegan, we're gonna pull the pin kind of thing. So I think really just checking in with ourselves um, is, is, is step number one. But yeah, I, th I think with that, I think, let us know in the comments how you how you navigate this. Maybe, you know, both romantically and with friends and family. I mean, do you feel comfortable, you know, having non-vegans in the close, intimate parts of your life? And you can kind of look to the other side like Nisha, or maybe you more more like myself, and it really just erodes at your um, self-care and mental health, being around body parts, as it does for me, so. Just considering the, the question of, loving somebody in spite of them. And that's probably a situation where you're in a relationship and you already know that person and then you become vegan. That must be quite different to choosing to enter into a relationship with the person is not vegan. And, and thinking, you know, I guess, I guess the same around non-intimate non relationships and family members. You can still love family members who not vegan. Yeah. Or at least we try. <laughs> yeah, no, but seriously, it, it is it is a challenging question. Um, yeah, so I'm really curious to hear what everybody says in the comments and, and keep the conversation kind of going because it's not just about the two of us, it's uh, really about all of us and figuring out how we can both build respect for our fellow animals and also maintain relationships and, and, and live our lives. That's an important part of self-care too, I think. So. Thank you all for watching and for all you're doing to raise awareness, especially when it comes to evolving our language. And we'll see you in the next video. See you later. I've been flying from town to town, from London to Taiwan. I've been all around the globe trying to protect your soul. free resources such as a discussion guide and language document check out veganinteractions.com thanks for watching